Hi and welcome to the t-shirt sew along. So this is a t-shirt obviously. So you're going to need a t-shirting weight fabric. So your best look for a poly cotton, 100% cotton, bamboo, um, a cotton silk or a, you could even use a light uh, merino nylon blend if you wanted to. You just need something very light and flowy for this garment. So because we're sewing raw hems, be really careful when you cut the hemage that the seam is nice and straight because we're not going to be sewing a hem. Uh, it doesn't matter if you decide to go and sew a hem on it later, I've actually designed this to just be a raw hem in line with the 90s trend that's quite in at the moment. So because this is a knit garment, I've patterned this with 6mm seam allowances for our overlocker. So when you're ready, set your overlocker up with four threads of colour that match your fabric and set the stitch width to 6mm which is quarter of an inch. In addition to this, you are going to need to do some hemming on the sleeves. So you're going to need access to either a cover stitch machine or you could use a twin needle on a domestic machine or a stretch stitch on a domestic machine, that's up to you. I'm going to assume you don't have access to either of these. So for this tutorial, we're just going to use a straight stitch on a sewing machine and an overlocker. And I think you'll find that this is one of those really quick, easy throw together tees that you'll just be amazed how quick it sews. So let's get started on sewing the front and the back together at the shoulder seams. So this is the weight of the fabric I'm using for this garment. Um, it is, as you can tell, a really light t-shirting weight. Um, this would be really good in a merino nylon blend as well if you like those natural, well, <laughs> semi-natural fibres. And 100% um, cotton or bamboo would be lovely on it as well as I mentioned. So when you're ready, take your back and then take your front and match these pieces right sides together and we're going to sew the shoulder seams. So accuracy on this garment is quite important. So what I'm going to do is just hold the shoulder seam on this side together and pin it and then we're going to come across to the armhole edge. So this is a drop shoulder so it's designed to be worn um, quite a sloppy, a sloppy, a relaxed tee. It's designed to be um, worn like that. And it's a good transition seasonal tee as well. It's got plenty of drape in the front and at the back. So um, it hides the tummy area quite well and also the hips. Right, so, as you can tell, I've pinned within the 6mm quarter of an inch seam allowance and that's just to make sure um, that the pins don't leave any runs or ladders, they don't pierce a hole in the fabric. Um, the other thing I do need to remind you of is make sure you have ball pins so that the ball head, what it does is it pushes its way between the yarns or the fibres the yarns of the fabric so when it's knitted together it will just push between them rather than stab a hole like a knife through them so that's why we really need to make sure we have ball needles on uh, both our plain sewing machine for when we're doing the seams the hems on the sleeves and also for our pins and of course if you have access to clips that's also a good way to make sure that you don't pierce holes in your fabric right so when you're ready match the raw edges and stitch. The other thing that is important to do on this pattern is make sure you leave nice long tails for your overlocking. So when you've done one shoulder come across and complete the other shoulder. Now if you have access to a cover stitcher, now is the time, or a twin needle, now is the time to sew the um, 
hems at the armhole area so I'm just going to assume you don't have access to those and I'm going to overlock the edges So when you come through uh, to the shoulder seam that we just sewed, we want to just make sure that that seam is facing towards the back. And I'll repeat that on the other side. So now we're going to work on the neck band. So the neck band piece looks like this. I folded it right sides together. So when you're ready, fold your piece right sides together and overlock this short end. And let's have a look at the markings on our piece. Right opposite the edge that we've overlocked, this folded edge here will have a notch in it. So this is going to be our centre front and the seam we've just sewn is our centre back neck. And as we come down the sides you'll see notches on either side and those notches will match to our shoulder seam. So all it's a matter of doing now is to match this into our piece and stretch it into place. Now sometimes with neck bands they can be a bit tricky so what I'm going to do is go to my plain sewing machine and run a line of tacking stitches and I'll show you how to do that now. So sometimes when you have really light fabric, especially if it's a small piece like a neckband, what you'll find is the edges roll really easily and sometimes you'll find the cheaper the fabric the more it rolls. We can hold our fabric together just using a longer stitch on our plain sewing machine. So making sure we have a ball needle here and our stitch is slightly longer than normal and just bear in mind that this is just a tacking stitch we're not going to be removing it later because as long as your thread colour matches your fabric when we go to overlock this into our garment it will just get lost within the overlocking so we don't need to remove this tacking stitch later so starting at that centre back seam there Fold this in half so that wrong sides together and right sides are out. I'm going to start just to one side of that seam and what I'm going to do is just very slowly as I go around and not stretching this is to stitch around about an eighth of an inch or three mils close to that raw edge. So as long as you stitch within the six mil it really won't be a problem. So just take your time. Now as we stretch this onto our garment when we use our overlocker, these threads will snap, but that's fine. It's just designed to hold this in place to help us sew our neckband on properly. So take your time and go around the edge. And you'll find if you stitch as close to the raw edge as possible, your end result will end up better. So as you can see this is already starting to take place as a neckband and you can still see our notch positions as you go around. So here is our centre back, directly opposite is our centre front notch and here is one of our shoulder notches. So because we're at the plain sewing machine I may as well now sew in the hems on the sleeves. So pop that neckband aside somewhere safe and come to the sleeve area. The hem allowance for our sleeve seams is one centimetre. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to sew this from the wrong side, is turn our hem up so we have one centimetre. And you might find it easier to press this into place. 
and I'm going to stitch directly through the overlocking. Now because I want my stitches to look like a cover stitcher, sorry my hems to look like a cover stitcher, I'm now going to run another row of stitches directly to the side and parallel to the seam I've just sewn and I'm going to sew it on this folded edge. This is an optional step, it's entirely up to you. So we're going to go and repeat that on the other sleeve hem. So let's put our neck band into the neck area of our garment. So come to the neck area and I always find it easier to place my garment inside out, the back at the back and the front at the front and then take my neck band and the sewn edge here on the neck band is going to match between the double notches. So the double notches show us that that is the back. Now directly opposite that seam we sewed on the band, and if you can't find your notch, just hold it in half, you'll see another notch. And that notch there is the front of our band. So we'll match that to the front of our garment. So that matches to the notch there on the centre front. So the remaining notch on one side of the centre back seam will sew to the shoulder here. And the other side will match to the other shoulder. And now it's a matter of overlocking this onto our garment. Now the neck band is smaller than the garment it's being sewn into so you do need to stretch this gently into place. So it's up to you where you want to start overlocking from. If you have a label going into this, I suggest you start from the centre back because then your label can hide the overlap. And if you don't, I suggest you start from one side of a shoulder seam because it hides the beginning and end quite nicely. It's also a little bit easier if you sew it with the neck band on top. So just remember we're going to be easing out those positions there. So when you're ready, make sure all three of those raw edges match and overlock that on. And make sure you take out your pins as you go.
So if you'd like to, go ahead to your iron and press this into place. And remember we want to push that down like that. So the bulk of that seam faces towards the body of the garment. So now we are going to sew the side seams. So come to the armhole area that we sewed the hem on. And match the underarm point. Come down the side seam and match the end position. And when you have that in place, overlock that together. And repeat on the other side. Now it's a good idea when you're sewing a garment to sew the seams in the same direction. So either sew everything from the top of the garment down or from the bottom of the garment up. So now let's go back to our plain sewer and finish this off. So we need to finish off the side seams. Come and place your garment at your plain sewer. So this is the back on top and the front's underneath. So here's the long tail I suggested you leave. Trim that back to about an inch which is two and a half centimeters. And what we want to do is Roll this overlocking edge over the top and sandwich it between the side seam there. Then push that seam to the back. I'm just going to hold it with a pin like that. What we're going to do now is just flip it over. So I only really just put the pin in there to show you. So flip that over and hold it down and making sure that tail is sandwiched in there just sew a couple of holding stitches on top of the line of your previous stitching for the hem on the sleeve so you just need to go backwards and forwards a few times and then do some quality control work and just tidy up there. And if you've got any of the overlocking coming through there, just snip that back a bit. So that's what we want the underarm to look like. So we're going to do exactly the same thing at the hem area. Work out which is the back, and I have the back on top. Come to your thread, snip it back to an inch, two and a half centimeters. Roll it up and sandwich it between the seam. We want it to sit towards the back like that, except we haven't got a previous line of stitching to sit within. So what we can do is there's two options. If you don't mind stitching being seen, run a couple of stitches through there. If you do mind the stitching being seen, and I do, what I do instead is just back tack so a couple of line of stitches to hold that overlocking line up within the seam allowance. 
because if we trim the overlocking off at the hem it's going to run up and fray. And also go ahead and press that into place. Now in a perfect world if I'd have done that properly that tail should have sat like that. So what I'm going to do now, because I didn't sew that properly, is just stitch that little edge bit up because what I'm looking for is a nice smooth transition when I'm wearing the garment from the front to the back. Right, that's better. So we just want a nice smooth look. And we'll repeat that on the other side. So I have the front on top and the back below. I'm going to trim that back. Push the seam towards the back. And then just stitch on the hemming stitches. a bit of quality control work, trimming off my stray threads. And down to the hemline, same thing, trim that back, roll that up. Now of course there's various ways you can finish off the overlocking thread, this is just mine. There's no hard and fast rules with sewing, um, it's really whatever works for you. But this is a method I find works quite well without the need to use any chemicals or glues or anything like fray stop or going to the effort of threading a needle and threading that back through. But as I said you can do anything the way you want to do it. So I'll just do some quality control work, just trim the stray threads off. And then I'll go and give this a really good press, making sure that those seams are all pressed towards the back of the garment. And that's the t-shirt finished. Quite quick. So thanks for joining me with the sew along video. I hope you get a lot of use out of this garment. I find it really good for weekend wear. And hope to see you again with my next sew along video soon.